Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Killer Miller and today I'm making a third part of my IGL series and this is going to be on practice. It's been a while since I've made one of these. Um, I just got busy and have not really gotten to making one, but here we are. So here is the third one. So today we're going to talk about practice, um, what proper practice looks like, what you should and shouldn't be doing, all that good stuff. So um, yeah, let's kind of just jump right into it. So today, yeah, obviously like I said, we're going to talk about what practice is. Um, how to develop and what it means to develop things to work on, um, setting the schedule and as well as uh, the goals and objectives for that weekday, whatever, accommodating practice to you and your team, um, individual stuff, um, any side notes and just uh, takeaways at the end. So yeah, let's jump right into it. So talk first about what is practice. So um, a lot of the, the reason I, I bring this up is because <laughs> very simply, like everybody should say, oh, I know what practice is, but not a lot of people actually do it right. So this is really just simply the time allocated for you and your team to work on specific things. No, not time to show up and brainlessly play, brainlessly, excuse me, play. And that's a lot of what I think a lot of people do not do correctly is they just kind of show up and just do things and like not really with any goals. They just kind of play. They just scrim a few times a day, you know, scrim and just run random maps, just doing whatever. And that's like kind of it. It doesn't really get past. We should work on our bind or we should work on our ascent, whatever map. And that's it. So um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today and why I'm making this. And that's kind of what this is. So practice is to make sure you don't mindlessly play. You need to show up. And like I said, have things to work on. So if you practice with no goal, you're literally just wasting your time. You just have to show up and have an actual idea of what you're doing. Once again, don't just play a few scrims and be like, we need to work on this map and then play the map and call it a day. It needs to be deeper than that. Um, Make sure you're getting everybody on the same page. Everybody's got to be there for a reason. Um, if one person's slacking, everybody's slacking. If uh, every, you know, if everybody's just kind of there for the heck of it, once again, everybody's time is being wasted. Um, and everybody needs to be there with an actual intention and wanting to be there. So that's really important too. Um, and then the whole idea of practice is to learn and improve, not to win. That's very, very important. A lot of people scrim to win. Um, and we'll actually talk about that here in a bit. But for the most part, you are all there. Actually, the entire part is the entire point of practice is to actually figure out things, learn the game better, learn as a team what you need to do more to actually win. So whenever that winning time comes, you're able to do it. And when the game time comes, you're able to win. So, And make sure you're there for the team and not yourself. This is not individual time. This is team time. So put your ego aside, set that aside at the door, and be ready to show up. So first and foremost, let's talk about things to work on. Defaults, executes, etc. So these are things you need to identify outside of scrims. So in your server time, VOD review time, whatever you want to call that little section before you actually go into practice, which by the way, you should have, and I'll once again get into that in a bit, is where you need to actually identify the issues. Don't just once again show up with no idea and just get to, and to start scrimming. What is your actual team's problem? Talk about that. Sit there and everybody, like once again, ego aside, working together to better the team. What do you think some of the problems are? Talk together on what you need to work on and pitch certain ideas. That's also very important. Everybody needs to come pitching with ideas. And one thing I actually did not talk about in here a lot, which I, I usually, I probably should have, is usually the coach and the IGL are the ones doing a lot of this like outside work. And, and when I say outside work, the ones actually talking the most, pitching the ideas, but everybody still needs to chip in. So I didn't want to just kind of throw that in there. So come together, pitch ideas and talk about things you need to work on. And once you figure out things you need to work on and you pitch ideas and everybody kind of comes to a consensus of like, okay, we need to work on this. That's where you move into that proper server time, which is going to be watching pro teams. Hey, what is this team doing? Or, you know, we're bad at this. Let's go watch this team and figure out how they're doing it. Try and work on that. Uh, or theorycraft your own ideas. You don't have to always copy pro teams. Obviously, that it's easier usually. And, it, it, you know, you can see protocols in, inside those strats sometimes. But um, sometimes, once again, based on how you play, and that's the most important reason why theory crafting and coming up with your own ideas is very important. That's why sometimes that is also a, a very good idea. It just kind of depends on what you want to do. So that's where you develop these goals and ideas. So once again, defaults, executes, whatever you want. So let's say you're really bad at defaulting on Ascent, for example. And I don't know, a team that does it well is Phase, Optic, you can you name it, right? Let's go watch those teams. Watch how they default on, on, on T side Ascent or attack side, whatever. And, and let's see what they're doing. How are they doing it? What are their goals? What do they look like they want to do? And let's copy that into some of our own gameplay and make our own default around that or just use theirs, whatever you want. Same one thing with the executes. What use is being thrown where? Who's throwing it? Why are they throwing it? What is the goal of it? How can I do this with this util? What is my entry pathing? Like all these things need to be laid out and identified, right? If that's something you need to work on. Um, tournament translation. This is actually one that I threw in here for the reason of scrim to win. Um, some people scrim to win only and other people never scrim to win. And then when they come to tournament time, they don't know what to do. So maybe that's something you need to work on. Maybe you do really, really good in practice. This is usually only relevant for like higher up level teams, but it still exists for every level. 
Um, maybe whenever it comes time to practice, it, you're it's, you're killing it. You guys are just putting up numbers against all teams that are usually better than you, whatever. But when the tournament comes, you can't perform. Well, that's probably because you never actually script to win. You should probably set that that has set that as a goal. Like, hey, we need to work on translating everything. So we're gonna play today like it is a tournament. Work on being very disciplined. Work on having high energy. Whatever the case may be. So, anyways, like I said, all that stuff you need to identify on your own. But that's the part one is figure out what you need. So number two is to set the schedule and objectives out for the week. So obviously now we've identified, I we need to work on executes. So we need to work on defaults, whatever. We need to set each day with, each day needs to have a goal of like, okay, today we're going to work on this map and we're going to do this thing on that map today. That's going to be our primary goal. And your team needs to be aware of that. So you all need to talk about it. So you can set these goals kind of however you want. If you just want to do it day to day, day to day, which most teams do it a little bit of both of like, hey, this week we're going to really work on our defaults, for example, once again. And on this day, it's going to be with this map or something, right? You know, it can be however you want it to. But regardless, those need to be set. And it can be also different goals scrim to scrim, right? It just all depends on how you want to do it. It's all up to you. Um, and then I'm also going to show here an example schedule that you can set out so your team can see it. Um, and then also like a, an app called when to meet. So that's where I was going about to get into this is availability. So obviously, depending on why you're competing, everybody has different goals. And I don't want to go on a super big spiel about this. But at the end of the day, not everybody is free all the time, right? Um, some teams are available eight hours a day. Some people are available four hours a day. That's fine, right? But you need to figure that out, not the night before. You should probably figure that out the week before. So there's this, there, you know, that's what this whole when to meet thing is. So um, as far as the example schedule goes, it really just comes down to what your team needs and wants and how you want to do it. So yeah, and that's kind of also goes with that goal and setting out the schedule is like your team should know what to expect that day or that week, whether you set it in the actual schedule, which I'm about to show, or the day before. So this is an example schedule. This is actually the schedule that I use for my team. And the way this works is we have over here the times listed with the days at the top and those are the actual like numbers of days. And you can see what's going on in each time slot, right? So, and I just have different time zones for different people. So let's say I'm in central time, right? I can, I can see what's going on at two, three, four, five. So at two o'clock central, my team has server work and then three and four, we have two scrims. We go into a break, two more scrims and a lottery, right? That's actually the current schedule that my team uses. Uh, and this is, and, so that, and then I obviously move down to this bottom part where we have the maps, right? So I could say here, let's say on Tuesday, I can see that we're doing server work. We have two ascent scrims back to back with these two players, these two teams. We have a break and then we have an ice box that's blue and a haven with the yellow color, right? And that's how, this is a really, really easy and simple schedule to follow. And then on the side here, I kind of have it based differently. Maybe you want to do, you know, maybe you don't really need a VOD review and you, you want to put more time into scrims and server work. Here you go. And then maybe you want to do server work at the end. Maybe you want to do less scrims and a lot more server work and VOD review. Whatever the case may be, here's an example of what it looks like for a tournament. I just have these ideas laid out because I think this is really important to have because this is a really simple, this schedule specifically is a really easy way to see what you're doing. It's like, okay, this week or today we're working on Ascent and then these two maps, right? That's, that's cool to know, right? So this is, you're welcome to steal this schedule. I could try and put it in the description if you want, but regardless, I'm just showing an example of like what it could look like for your team. So the next thing I want to talk about is a when to meet. So once again, not everybody has the exact same availability. So it's very important that throughout the week ever you're aware of what's going on so here's this website i'm actually going to pull it up on the side here um so here is like what this could might look kind of look like here you kind of see like these days of the week what it's called blah 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 so this is this is kind of what this looks like once it's all filled out so you can see the days listed out um and you can see the availability so on these dark green blocks you can see availability you can see over here it's not here right now but when i hover over you'll see it says available so player one two and three are available all of friday and saturday great how about on thursday um, from two to four, player two is not available. So maybe I just, or, or player one and three are not available. So maybe we don't do anything that day, or maybe we don't do anything during those times. Now we'll do stuff during this time for everybody's free. On Wednesday, player three is not available for the normal prac time. So maybe I'll get a fill, or maybe we won't do anything that day. Anyways, you see the point. It's all like up to you. This is a great thing to use if your team is usually a little rocky with their availability and schedule. So now you're aware of what everything's going on. You don't have to sit there and ask the night before and try and DM all your teammates and say, hey, like, are you available? When are you not? And have to do all that. Like, this does it for you. So this is just another great thing you can use for yourself and for your team. So just a side note. 
Um, another thing is to accommodate practice to you. So you need to set practice ideas based on what your team benefits from. So I kind of went over this earlier when I was explaining the schedule. It's like if you get a, it needs to basically be like what your team needs. Maybe your team needs more server time. And if you get a lot of value out of that, do more server time. Pretty simple. If you need more scrims and you feel like you've gotten a ton of server time stuff done and you want to practice all of it, do more scrims. Stuff like that. There needs to be a balance. Um, and it's very important that you you try different things and figure out what works for you. Because the most important thing is to, is to not just copy somebody's schedule because they do it. Now, obviously, I, I, which is kind of ironic because I said to use this schedule, but just because some team does seven hours a day does not mean you have to. It doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Maybe after you know four scrims, your team's really burnt out and you need to probably call it there. Maybe you should just call it there. Um, and that's a bit of a different topic because you need to work on, uh, <laughs> you need to practice potential like stamina for tourney days, but that's a topic for another day. But basically what I'm trying to get at is it just all depends on how your team is approaching the game and the practice day and all that stuff and figure out what works for you. And that's that's something that my team has done and we found a good schedule and it's great for us. So that's something that you should do. Um, another thing, sorry, let me pull this up on the side, um, is individual practice. So this needs, these are things that need to happen outside of the team practice. So obviously you're gonna have your team skill set, your schedule, your all that good stuff, but there's still things that you individually need to work on. So these are things that you do outside of practice. Now, obviously some of these things you can work on in practice, but the main goal, of like being with your team is working on a very specific like team oriented goal and maybe you need to work on something as an individual so for example if you struggle mechanically you should invest a lot more time into aim training death batching rank you know whatever aim specific stuff you want to do something i actually struggled with for a while was that um i usually was i just struggled mechanically for a while so guess what i did outside of the game i just did a ton of uh death matching specifically played a good bit of ranked got into a little bit of aim training and my my mechanics have improved and so that's helped not just me it's helped my whole team right obviously same thing on the other side maybe you have really really good aim but you're you, you'd make some maybe you make some bad plays maybe you don't really understand how defaults work as well we'll spend some more time watching the game studying the game more watch some more vods theory craft some more ideas whatever you want to do it's very important that Outside of practice is individual time, so you can later bring up the team as a unit. Because if what well, you're lagging behind, you might just get replaced. So, you know, and that's not just about you getting replaced, it's obviously, but you know, at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're being the best team that you can be. So, working on yourself is very, very important. So, that's another thing you want to talk about there. So, um, getting towards the end of this is the side notes. So, first thing is discipline. This, this is a lot of this is a big. Uh, gripe that I have, one of the biggest gripes I have with a lot of teams, even if you don't have the most efficient schedule, even if you are not exactly sure what you should do, all that stuff is not a big deal, but I, I absolutely hate when teams have no discipline and they're just running around and just like doing things they would not do in a tournament. I've scrimmed specific people that have literally put up insane numbers against me, but in a tournament, they don't, they don't, they don't do the same thing. And I'm not saying that to sound negative towards these people, and I'm not obviously going to say who, but what I'm getting at is that's probably a clear idea that they're not being disciplined. You need to do things that you would find yourself doing in a tournament or limit test things that you might see yourself doing in a tournament. If you're a KO player and there's a smoke in front of you in a scrim, you might maybe try flashing out of it with a teammate because you might do that in a game. But don't just do something because you just because it could be a good idea or, or you know, if it, it could be a bad idea. Like you just need to do things that you're gonna find yourself doing and to get comfortable inside of your default, inside of your setup, inside of whatever you want. Be disciplined, do smart, and play smart. Do things that you would see yourself normally doing. I don't need to repeat that again. So very, very important is that one. I hate, I hate seeing that personally. So another thing is to practice for your team and not the other team. So if a team has decided they don't want to practice that day, they don't care, they're going to run it down, that's okay. You should still practice for yourself and don't accommodate to that. Now, obviously, there's some exceptions if people are being extreme and they're just like five stacking if you're like working on your a execute or something and maybe even then that's not even the best example because maybe it's good to practice that um but some people are going to be extreme but at the end of the day you should practice for yourself what is your, or your your team not yourself what is your team there to do we want to work on our defaults if they're heavy countering that default or whatever that's sometimes okay practice for yourself not the other team let them do them and let you do you that's the best way to look at it so be on time and attentive. At the end of the day, you're not just on your time, you're on everybody's time. So be there when everybody wants to be. Don't waste anybody's time. Don't just be there. Don't just show up late because you don't care. Like you're that you're on you're not on your clock, you're on everybody's. So it's very important that you're there and when you are there, you you want to be. You're attentive, you're focused, you're paying attention, all that good stuff. Not at the end of the day, or <clears throat> excuse me. At the end of the day, not everybody has the best time or best availability. So whatever you do have free time, you need to make sure that you are there and you're in the moment and stuff. 
Um, hold each other accountable. Make sure you're being you're being honest with each other and you're making sure everybody's there. Help people be on time. Sometimes it's not always a bad thing. People just struggle with time management. So maybe you should be an accountability partner for them. Um, call people out whenever they're, they're doing stuff stupid or they're making a lot of mistakes. Now, don't do it in a, an abrupt way. That's going to maybe cause some problems. But, you know, hold each other accountable once again. Help somebody if they're struggling in a certain area. Be a good teammate and make sure everybody's working uh, together as a unit and do, uh, do all that good stuff. So that's another very important thing. Um, the last thing is to not overdo it. Um, make sure, especially if you if you really do want to try and take a lot of these ideas that I've talked about into your practices, um, you might want to be careful just all of a sudden implementing everything all at once. If your team was on a pretty bad schedule, of like we show up like 30 minutes late, and then we just do like these kind of weird, you know, barely kind of server working stuff. And then we scrim three times and we call it. It's like, you might not want to just go from that like three and a half hour schedule into a just a set seven hour schedule. Like you should probably work everybody into it. And that just, um, that comes with new ideas as well. And, and trying to figure out the balance. So you don't want to do everything all at once. Try to ease things in. Maybe you work on extra server time for that day. Do your three script excuse me and then you move on the next day maybe you do four streams of the break however you want to look at it just make sure you're very careful about that so um to end this off we're just going to takeaways and some of the end stuff so hopefully after this video you should go into your practice weeks with a schedule of when you're available to practice at the end of the day um i'm not going to sit here and uh that, well you, you know this is just a video for ed, for educational purposes and i hope somebody finds value out of this but what i'm trying to get at it with this point is hopefully if you're going to take this schedule idea away now you know more it makes it easier on everybody too now not everybody's sitting there like oh god are we practicing do i have time to do this it's like no you know you're aware and that helps everybody so hopefully you'll go into your weeks and even just your days knowing what everybody's good to do and all that good stuff. Um, make sure you have a goal for each day and even maybe the week um, and know what you're going to do that day to accomplish that goal. Make sure you're actually practicing for a reason. Don't just show up and say, oh, we're practicing fundamentals or no, don't, don't, don't be lazy. Should be there, do things for a reason and tell yourself, we need to work on this, tell your team and have a goal and work on that goal. Be on time. Don't waste everybody else's time. Don't waste your time. Be there if you're going to be there. If you're going to just, just, just don't show up late. You know, once again, you're there on a, so yeah, other people's time. So, you know, be, be hold yourself accountable to that and hold each other accountable to that too. Um, you are going to work on yourself outside of practice. Now, obviously, you can still work on some individual stuff in practice, obviously. But um, more so what I mean by that is if everybody works on themselves, if they have one person working on themselves outside of practice, that person is going to feel like everybody else is not doing as much. And that's going to that, that could hurt the team. And on the flip side of that, um, if everybody else is working on themselves and you're not, well, guess what? That's going to be a problem as well. So make sure you're doing your own stuff to bring everybody up as a unit later rather than earlier. Or sorry, not rather than earlier, but make sure you're doing things so this does not become a problem later as an individual. Figure out what you need and do those things outside. Leave your ego at the door. This is probably one of the most important things is like everybody should be there to learn. At the end of the day, everybody has something to teach you, even if they're worse than you, even if they're sometimes wrong. Everybody has something to offer to you. You can always take different points and different things and different ideas for yourself and for your benefit. If you leave your, if you leave your ego at the door, you're going to leave this option open. So make sure you're always doing that. Don't just be having ego. It, it just it just prevents things. It just prevents you from learning. And at the end of the day, that's the whole point of going into practice. Figure things out and learn together. So um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all we wanted to talk about. Um, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, I, I, this is a very important one to make. I feel like a lot of people struggle with the idea of practice. And there's a lot of things that I left out. This is not perfect. Um, there's a lot of things that I could have said. I'm sure probably too much that I did say. But at the end of the day, I just hope that this gives you more ideas of how to practice, what to work on, and gives you some goals and things you can work on more. So, um, if yeah, if you have anything else, leave some stuff in the comments. I really appreciate your time. Um, and yeah, y'all have a good day.